And we are back once again here on Hockey Talk on 88.9 FM, WNYO, the voice of us we go. This is the start of hour number two. Matt Solomon, Michael Keeley, and Chris Lowen with you in studio. And now we've got a very special guest joining us on the phone line. This gentleman was a former NHL head coach with the Buffalo Sabres and the New York Islanders, won the Jack Adams Award as NHL Coach of the Year in 1997. And he is now currently the VP of Hockey Operations for the Rochester Americans. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ted Nolan. Mr. Nolan, are you there? Very good. How are you, Matt? Good. Yourself? Very good, thank you. Uh, just to brief everybody here, uh, Mr. Nolan, we've got, I'm a Sabres fan, I'm from Rochester, and then we've got two Islander, Islander fans. fans in the room, so yep. we've got ties all over the place. Uh, I'm just going to start this off. I want to ask you, uh, your current position uh, with the Rochester Americans, you're the VP of Hockey Operations. Can you just explain to everybody what exactly you do on a daily basis? Well, you, you know what, I, I got a call uh, uh, as soon as I got let go by the New York Islanders. Uh, Kurt Stiers, is, Kurt Stiers, the owner of the uh, Rochester Americans, he just purchased the Rochester Americans in the uh, Rochester Nighthawks, the lacrosse team, and he called me up and see if I'd I'd be interested in coming down and, and helping them out uh, as far as uh, just getting involved with the, you know, when you say VP of hockey operations, it's kind of getting involved with a lot of things from uh, from the affiliation agreement that we have with the Florida Panthers to the lease agreement that we have with the city of Rochester to uh, corporate sponsorship. So actually, this is probably one of the most um, interesting, intriguing jobs I had for quite some time because it, when I coach, you just worry about 20 players on the ice. You worry about systems. You worry about wins and losses. Here, you, you worry about the whole operation of the of the hockey operation. So I'm going to school here and, and learning quite a bit on, on the business side of hockey. So it's uh, it's quite uh, quite grueling and trying to rebuild the the brand of the Rochester Americans, who I believe is one of the most storied franchises in in all of sports. So it's uh, it's a great job, and I'm working with some great people. All right, well, before we keep going with discussion of the Amerix, um I'd like to. Go back in time, if you will. What's your favorite moment or favorite memory about coaching in the NHL? Uh, you know, probably the, the, the most uh, uh, memorable one is, I, I guess, when, when you coach uh, the National Hockey League and you get to go in some of the places that you grew up uh, uh, watching on TV, uh, you get to go down the... Um, uh, I was, it wasn't that long ago, but I had actually had a chance to coach in, uh, uh, the old Montreal Forum, uh, coach against, uh, uh, the team that drafted me, the Detroit Red Wings, and, uh, coach in Scotty Bowman, and, and, uh, you know, it, there's two numerous to, to, to remember, but you, you'll always remember that first game you had to coach the, uh, National Hockey League team, and you got the guys on the team like, uh, Pat LaFontaine, who, and then your, your first time, you're wondering what, what can you say to these guys that, that had every kind of coaching in, in their lives, uh, 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 good condition coaches, good nutritionists, and, and what are you going to say that's going to inspire them more than somebody else? So it's, uh, you know, to answer your question quite um, broadly, it, it's a whole sector of things. Yeah, I can't really remember one specific thing, but uh, just the experience of a coaching, I believe, in one of the best uh, best leagues in the world and, and coaching in one, uh, um, international hockey was, was certainly a thrill. Hey, Mr. Nolan, uh, Chris Lewin here. I just want to ask you another question about your coaching days. With the, um, especially with the Islanders, near the end there, it seemed that uh, you had a few disagreements with General Manager Gar Snow at the time about how to run the team. And now seeing how the Islanders are doing right now, what exactly would you have done differently if you were still head coach from then until now? Well, you, you know, they they have so many young guys and. Uh, uh, when, when you coach a, a younger team versus an older team, the, the, the way, you know, I get asked that question, a uh, very interesting question. I got, uh, when I first became a, a coach in the National Hockey League, I started with the old uh, Hartford Whalers, who are now the Carolina Hurricanes, and, and that was the lockout year, and I went back home, and I just came back from junior hockey the year before that, and, and I was coaching my my youngest son, uh, my oldest boy at the time was uh, Brandon, he was in, in Pee Wee, so I went back and coached the, the Pee Wee team, and then somebody asked me, what would you do uh, with the PV team versus something else? It's all how uh, the type of team that you have, and certainly the Islanders right now, they have a young team, and they're going through some uh, some hurdles, and the old cliche, you just have to work but one day at a time, one shift at a time, and, and just get really back to basics and, and wait for the breaks to, to come. You, you can't get too... Uh, uh, to concern because right now they're, they're going through a very, very difficult time. So, uh, to try to make it as, as, uh, enjoyable through a very difficult time is, is probably the best, uh, best advice I could, I could, uh, probably add. 
Uh, now, jumping back to the uh, Amherst, of course, your current position, uh, news came out this year that the Amherst and the Panthers are not renewing their contract after this season. I'm just curious. I, I'm not, not sure how much you can tell us, but uh, what's going to happen to the Amherst this year if they're going to try to find a new NHL partner or what? Because I know a lot of interest was lost in Rochester after they left the Buffalo Sabres, and I know you know they had attendance problems after that, a lot of less people showing up at games, and you know the Sabres... Amherst affiliation just seemed to work so well, but what's next for the Amherst after moving on from the Panthers? Well, but you, you know what? Uh, the, the big thing is here, we're not really, really overly concerned with uh, who we're going to be as, uh, affiliated with. Uh, I think that our biggest concern right here in Rochester is, is reestablishing the, the Rochester brand and in, uh, in the meaning of, of the Rochester Americans. They said we're Rochester, and, and um, I'm not too sure what happened in the past and why things have, have uh, went wrong with, with Buffalo. Uh, we're in a new day here. We, uh, our president Louis Stats informed the, the Florida Panthers that we will not be renewing the, the current, um, affiliation agreement that we have. He never said we wouldn't go back to them. We just, uh, under the situation with, with the affiliation, it just, uh, uh, we feel down here in Rochester we have to have a little bit of input on, on the type of players that we have down here as far as the, uh, coaching in Rochester, having the Rochester Americans is, is a little bit different from, from other centers. So you look at the, the success of the, of the Hershey, Hershey Bears. I mean, they have a great, great working relationship with the, uh, Washington Capitals. They have some senior, uh, players on that team that are, that could be identified with, uh, with, uh, city of, of, uh, Hershey. And the same thing we need here. Uh, Jody Gage played a long, long time in mm-hmm. the American Hockey League. And, and he's the, he's the icon in, in the city of Rochester. Unfortunately, over the last number of years, we haven't had that one or two or three players that, that can get uh, involved with the community, the community can identify with. So we just, uh, we just felt with the, with the way the affiliation is with the, uh, with the uh, Florida Panthers, it just wouldn't quite uh, work down here as, as we could work in other centers. But right here, we just felt a, a change needed to be made. So we, we informed uh, uh, Florida that we will not be doing the same affiliation. Uh, we have yet to hear back from them, so I'm not too sure if they're going to uh, uh, agree to which way we want to do it. But, you know, any any type of uh, relationship, whether it's a, a marriage or or any type of thing, it has to have cooperation. You have to have the same uh, same beliefs and same uh, same ideas. And right now we're in, we're in the process of... of uh, of uh, looking for someone else, and, and maybe maybe it could be Florida. Who knows? But right now, we're just uh, re- trying to reestablish yourself in the city of, of Rochester, trying to get some corporations back involved. Our our season ticket base from uh, two two years ago to this year has over doubled already. We we made some inroads into the city again, so things are are looking up. Now we just got to get the on ice product a lot better. All right. Well, staying on the topic of the on ice product. Currently, the Amherst have a former Oswego State player, Eric Selleck, in their lineup. Just wanted to get your thoughts on what you've seen of him through this point in the season. Well, yeah, you know, anybody who ever uh, watched me uh, watch me coach and type of teams that I, I love to coach is, uh, is the teams that uh, uh, you have to have certain players on your team that, that uh, bring their uh, lunch bucket to work and their work helmet and their work boots and, and just go. Uh, they might not be the most skilled people in the world, but uh, they're very entertaining, and uh, you know, Selleck's one of those players. I mean, he he plays with with a lot of heart, a lot of drive, and and uh, he's fast becoming uh, one of those names in Rochester that the fans kind of identify with. Uh, you know, any any type of team, any city loves hard working players, and, and Selleck's uh, doing that. And and from the first uh, maybe ten games to to the next twenty games, he's. Okay, uh, I, I don't know if we're losing your call. Yeah, okay, we just we lost the uh, phone call. So, if uh, unfortunately we had to drop the phone, somehow the phone call was lost on the. If Ted calls back, we'll ask him our last uh, couple questions here. But some great answers from Ted Nolan again. We appreciate the call. Obviously, have a lot of um, connections, great, great insight. connections in this room to yeah. Islander fans and a Sabre fan. Very interested in what he has to say. And so. Especially connections to pe- a lot of people around here because. This is Buffalo Sabre country, and it's also America. We're right in the middle between the best rivalry in the American High League, the Rochester Americans, and the Syracuse Crunch. We're right in the middle of it. And in terms of the, the question I asked <laughs> about the Emmerichs and the Panthers renewing their contract, and I oh, – okay, oh, it looks like he's called back. <laughs> Mr. Nolan, is that you? 
Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, we just had a phone line problem. Uh, my next question. Big, uh, I went on my landline. There's a big uh, snowstorm up here in Rochester, uh -oh. so maybe just kill the signal here. I'm sorry about that. No, that's okay. But, uh, it'll, be, it'll be fun getting home on Thursday. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's been snowing here for the last week. Yeah, yeah. we got the same thing. Um, the next question I was going to ask, uh, you know, I'm sure it's in the back of your mind. Do you see yourself in any way returning to the NHL uh, someday? Well, you know, I've always, uh, the, the one thing I've always uh, maintained, uh, Ever since I was a little boy, uh, having uh, having hope and having uh, uh, having a belief that uh, things do work out, and you know, uh, uh, ten years ago when I when I got let go from almost uh, ninety seven, I got let go by the Buffalo Sabers. Uh, nine years later, uh, I got a call from Mr. Robert Irving, coach junior hockey up in Moncton, and a year later I was back in the National Hockey League. So I, I still really believe that I could uh, contribute to the game. I, I, I think I'm. I'm pretty good at what I do as far as uh, coaching the game of hockey, and so I'm I'm very hopeful. And um, I, I got a new agent that's uh, calling some teams and expressing my interest about uh, getting involved back with coaching. So I'm just kind of uh, one of those guys that are is waiting around for the opportunity. But in the meantime, I got to focus on what I'm doing now, and and that's helping the Rochester Americans. But in the back of my mind, and in the back of my heart, I'm, I'm hoping that phone rings one day that uh, a team is looking for a coach that. That maybe I'd be very suitable for. I know you're talking about former Oswego player Eric Selleck before. How does a team like the Amherst or at any level or any team in the AHL or NHL level view a player who comes from a school like Oswego or any Suniac school compared to those players who play in junior hockey in Canada? Well, you, you know what? The, the, the one thing I, I find um, uh, players come, come from everywhere. But I coach junior hockey in, in Canada and and I played junior hockey, and, and, and you watch the, the NCAA program and all the kids coming out, for, out of there. You look at players coming from, from Europe. You look at kids uh, uh, playing in Tier 2 hockey, and so all of a sudden, uh, two years later, they're, they're playing in the National Hockey League. So I just believe uh, that I always believed when I was a kid. I, I come from a very, very small uh, uh, First Nation community in northern Ontario. Uh, who would ever think uh, that I could come out of there and play in the National Hockey League? So players are coming from everywhere. If, if you have a heart and you have a desire and you have the uh, skill level, uh, then the National Hockey League and, and leagues are going to find you and, and give you that opportunity. And, and Eric's taken advantage of full advantage of his of his opportunity. I mean, from the, from the first time I seen him in training camp to the first few games, he looked a little, uh, uh, you know. Uh, you know, a little bit confused once in a while on the ice, but uh, as the games went, he got better and better and better, and and uh, he's fast becoming one of the most popular players here in Rochester. All right, we're gonna, we've got one final question before we let you go for the night. Um, currently, the Amherst are in last place in the division. Uh, bit of a slow start to this season. With the talent that's here and the schedule going forward, where do you see the Amherst finishing the rest of the season? Well, you, you, you know what? The, the, you can never under, underestimate. Uh, we have a new coach here in, in Chuck Weber. He's he's doing a tremendous job with his team, and and uh, you know we we might not be as, as skilled as other other teams in this league, but uh, uh, the one thing with the Rochester Americans is that they're working, and you, you never know. I mean, we're we're two games, uh, two or one games under 500. Um, you, you have one good weekend, and down here in the American Hockey League, you play three and uh, three, you play five and six nights. Uh, you have one good weekend. You win three and uh, three and three, and all of a sudden you're right back in the, in the playoff picture. So uh, you never know until it's uh, until halfway through the year where you sit. But right now, we still have a strong belief that we could uh, squeeze into the playoffs. And, and when you get in the playoffs, you, you just never know. Before we let you go, I just wanted to say uh, one thing from an Islander fan standpoint. After having a few down years and everything. Just all, from pretty much all Islander fans, that night a few years ago at the Coliseum when you brought Al Arbor back to the Coliseum, first of all, thank you for that. That was one of the most outstanding nights for Islander fans in years. But, I mean, that that was one of the best nights this decade for Islander fans besides the playoff series against Toronto and that against the Buffalo Sabres. But, I mean, thank you for that. And from all of us, thank you for coming on the show today and helping us out. Oh, no problem at all. And to tell you the truth, that that was, uh, you talk about moments. Uh, you asked a question earlier, and that, uh, that slipped my mind, which it shouldn't have slipped. Uh, that night, all, all I always remember, uh, Al Arbor is one of the classiest guys in, in, in the business, one of the most successful coaches in the business, and having an opportunity to, to meet with him and, and talk with him and actually coach a, a real NHL game. This wasn't a, a gimmick. It wasn't one of those uh, exhibition games. It was a real NHL game. And, and if you look at my coaching record, I'm one minus, uh, I'm one, 
um, win off my win record, uh, and Al Arbor has one to, to make it, uh, um, 900 something wins and then 1500 games coached. So that was uh, an honor for me to be part of that night. Hey, well, ladies and gentlemen, that was VP of Hockey Operations, Ted Nolan. Mr. Nolan, we thank you very much for the time. It was greatly appreciated. Well, thank you very much for having me on, guys. No problem. Right, have a good night. Take thank it you. easy.